What's up guys and welcome to Tech KK. Today I'll be showcasing to you guys how an 8500 ringgit PC looks like. Before I do begin, do check out this video up here. It's uploaded by the owner of this PC and in that video he will explain to you guys why we are actually doing all of this. And I would like to give a huge shout out to him. His name is Jiwan Lo and he's a very good friend of mine. And I would like to thank him for trusting me to build his first ever PC. And I think that's a very very huge deal. So thank you so much. I hope that this PC has lived up to your expectations. I hope that you're going to love and enjoy using this PC as much as I had so much fun building this. Alright guys, if you guys want to check out the price and the parts of this build, do look at the description below. I have put everything down there for you guys to refer. Let's get started! Alright, let's go through the parts that we are using for today's build real quick. Starting off with the processor, I will be using the Ryzen 7 1700X, mainly for the 8 core and 16 threads. Since we are building a PC that focuses on rendering and exporting videos, the more cores and threads will greatly reduce the rendering time and not forgetting the ability to still multitask. So you can probably do some photoshopping and editing of the thumbnails for your videos while your video is in the middle of rendering. Next, we'll be using an Asus Prime B350 Plus for the motherboard which is of course having an AM4 socket. My criteria checklist to select this motherboard is fairly simple. The right socket supports up to 3200MHz memory, has an M.2 slot for NVMe SSD, USB 3.1 and ATX size. For the RAMs, we are using the 4 DIMMs of G-Skill Trident Z, 8GB of 3200MHz DDR4. We didn't really have much choice on this since we bought this in the retail store locally, but I mainly wanted a very fast frequency DIMMs. RGB is purely aesthetic in my opinion, but it is tested and proven that AMD performance is affected by the frequency of the memory. So do make sure to get the faster memory to get the best performance out of your Ryzen CPU. To cool down the CPU, we will be using the Cooler Master Master Liquid 240, which supports AM4 right off the box. However, there are other options. You can either use the stock cooler that comes with Ryzen, which there are many good reviews on, you can also get a third-party air cooler or like in my case, a third-party AIO liquid cooler. But do make sure if the cooler just comes with the AM4 mounting bracket if you will be using the Ryzen CPU. For graphics card, this build will be featuring the Asus ROG Strix GTX 1070 Gaming with 8GB of DDR5 VRAM. The rendering and video editing software plays a role on getting which graphics card is better. But in conclusion, Adobe Premiere has a better performance using the NVIDIA 10 series, or if you're using DaVinci Resolve, AMD Radeon RX 500 series is the better choice to go for. And with the GTX 1070, playing most of the big titles games now with max settings at 1080p would not be a problem at all. Next, let's talk about the storage drive. We will be using two drives starting with the Corsair 240GB MP500 NVMe SSD. This drive will be our main drive to boot Windows. All the editing softwares will be here and all the rendering works will be done here. Then we have a mass storage drive of 2TB from Seagate Barracuda to store all the completed projects, games, documents and all the other good stuffs. To supply power for this system, we will be using the Corsair CX650M which is a semi-modular 80 plus bronze power supply unit which has more than enough power to supply to this PC. This power supply looks awesome with the matte black and grey color scheme and cable management would be a lot easier. Last but not least, a casing to house all the parts. We are using the SegoTap K7 Mid Tower RGB casing. SegoTap is a Taiwanese company which is well established in the China market and is very popular here in Malaysia. For this price range, it would be impossible to get what SegoTap is offering which is a full 3-sided tempered glass with 320 RGB fans and a fan controller. However, it is my first time using SegoTap casing, so I can't give my review yet, but maybe I can cover in the future videos. But as of now, I can safely say that the price is really mind-blowing. Alright, let's just get right into the build!
Alright guys, and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please give us a thumbs up and get subscribed. And I will try to release more of this content in the near future. And don't forget to check out Jivan Lo's channel, I'm gonna link it up here. He has many good contents and you guys can check it out. So that's it guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.